Hello everybody, welcome to your weekly show called Mokurel Slow, Radio Panics 105.4 FM or RadioPanic.org. Thank you for accepting this little talk with you. I see you have two, maybe three bright smiling people <laughs> in this venue, or in this small room here where we are sitting. So yesterday it was the first real ever concert of Ronaldo and Love. Okay, they were two or three small ones before. Only one. Or one, just one. Just one. one. Mm. Uh, just one. <clears throat> there was one, we did, we did, we were stood on the stage or sat on the stage in 1980. That was the last time we did anything uh, in front of an audience. And, um, and that was totally different to uh, last night. Mm -hmm. um, so it was an, an improvised performance, not not, um, <coughs> not songs and not, not structured at mm -hmm. all. Yeah, improvisation. Because <laughs> we, you know, w when we did that performance before, uh, we had our Struve Sneff cassette had just come out, uh, which was songs, of course, and but was, we thought, well, there's absolutely no way. Well, uh, back in those days, it wasn't possible to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, as you already mentioned, in the beginning period it was more improvised music. So, improvised maybe not the right word. Well, no, that's quite right because, well, when we started out back in 69, it was very much kind of, very much influenced by Tyrannosaurus Rex, folk music, and gradually it kind of mutated. It got stranger and stranger and stranger. And then it got to a point where we were just we were just improvising mm -hmm. completely and then one afternoon much to our surprise out of that in improvisation a structure emerged for a song for almost a song. like a song mm -hmm. and I mean that was moving on to the start of the the next phase when I mean that was kind of proto Ronaldo and the Loaf we weren't called Ronaldo and the Loaf then but that was the first kind of inklings of uh, what was to come thank you Refreshments have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so, the common thing was Tyrannosaurus Rex? Tyrannosaurus yeah, Rex. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's, that's how we, mm. we, we met in the art room at school. And I was doing a, um, tracing something off of a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, uh, album cover. And mm -hmm. Brian came up and he just said, oh, you like Tyrannosaurus Rex? I said, yes, mm -hmm. and do you? And, and I was and doing a drawing yeah. based on one of the songs at and the time. Yeah. And that's how we, we became friends. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what is Tyrannosaurus Rex? What kind Tyrannosaurus of Rex, were, well, it was Mark Bolan, who you probably know from T-Rex. Um, it was the band that he put together in 67. Uh, we're very sort of hippie-ish, just two people. That's why we always remained a duo. Yeah. Because they were, he was like guitarist, singer, and a, a guy playing bongo drums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and that's why we sort of had that in our heads mm. of being a, just staying as a duo. Mm. But you know, as Dave said, it's we over the period of time, as many many years of learning. Well, not learning to play the guitar, but really developing un un a way, unlearning, unlearning mm -hmm. how to play the yeah, guitar. Yeah, yeah. We've just developed our own style of doing, playing any instrument. We've never formally trained or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I suppose that over all those years, as Dave says, a song emerged in about 1978. It must have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then that led to perhaps doing more songs and um, we then got gathered some tracks together and um, there was an advert in a was it NME or yeah, Sound? Yeah, one of the music papers that were yeah. available at the time. Yeah, there was um, an advert to send in demo tapes and we sent a demo tape to this guy, uh, a record label, an independent record label in Cambridge in the UK. Um, and we sent this tape off and he came back very strongly mm -hmm. um, sort of uh, well you know oh yeah I really like this blah 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 um, do we want you would like to do a, an album and an EP with us 
Um, anyway, we, that, that didn't happen, obviously, because unfortunately the, his label had problems and, mm. and folded. Um, but what it did was it, um, it gave us the confidence that other people actually liked it and we took it around a few other labels and uh, we got some, nobody wanted to take it up, but we got some very, yeah, no, nobody actually wanted to take it up, but uh, mm. we did get some very constructive mm. criticism. And at that point we decided that we wanted to develop things further and we decided, because at that time all we had were two domestic two track tape recorders mm. and we used to bounce things backwards and forwards between them. Mm. So we decided to buy a four track. And that was, because that was the guy at Rough Trade, Jeff yeah. Travers, mm. we took the, some tape and he said, first thing guys, buy yourself a decent tape deck, and the second thing is you've got some interesting ideas going on, but you need to crunch them up more, Yeah, which is what we went away with, mm. and um, from that, uh, we, the, the next lot of songs became the Struve Snef cassette, and... Uh, Ultimately, the original album and EP that we had put together for this other label has been released, of course, and on Clang Gallery mm, and also yeah. on vinyl through Secret Records in the US. Um, and uh, basically, we ended up with Struve Sneff, which um, we, we, we was sold locally in a record shop as a cassette, um, mainly because it's a record shop I used to go into and every week and uh, there was a little cassette on the counter and I said, oh, who's, who's this? And he said it was a local band, they've done their own album. I oh, okay. And so we gave them a copy of our one and the, and the record shop said, oh yeah, yeah, that, that, that's really good, yeah, we'll take some. And they sold them over the counter. Okay. And then we did mail order and we sold a number more. Um, I think Rough Trade took ten or a dozen as well. Oh. But each one was made off well, the well, same they were master. handmade, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and taken off the same master tape every time run run through <laughs> individually. And I think we did about no more than two hundred and fifty in total. Mm. And also the sleeves are all, all right. Oh yeah. It's differently it was the same sleeve but with another different colors. Different colors. colors every yeah. every ten every ten copies we changed the colour yeah. of the of the paper. Yeah. We sent ten or sold That's right. ten new ones. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what the first colour was? Yes, gold, goldy oh, yellow. And there was a mistake on it as well. Oh was there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't be faked because I know the mistake. No, but uh, no, so there was a mistake in the um actually the, the an accent had been left off of one letter. But the next ten, which were on grey, it was repaired. Only a stamp collector would know. Well, only that. I am. A, I used to be a stamp collector. Yeah, a bit nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's also important to know that both you you like music also, so you're interested in different kinds of music. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I oh, yeah. think that we can also recognize a little bit in the music you're creating. Mm -hmm. It's not one type of music. But You're open-minded and, and you're... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, over the years, we've listened to goodness knows how many different kinds of music mm. and all the years we've been yeah. listening to stuff. And from... what I, I really... I, it's, it's almost impossible to sort of say, but there are certain, I suppose, influences have got into the music, perhaps world music, uh, and, you know, some of the previous... We like the sounds that mm -hmm. that music mm. made and the yeah. rhythms and... Uh, That would influence perhaps what we did. Yeah, it did. It did influence what we did and how we, but how we actually applied it to our songs is was never conventional. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Uh, when you're making new music, in the beginning, okay, it was improvised, and then mm. 78, something like that, yeah. mm -hmm. making songs. Mm -hmm. Was it uh, always a kind of team behind it when you start recording an album, or? Oh, we never recorded. We never thought album. about recording. Oh, we just mm. recorded stuff, and then we'd suddenly discover, oh, we've got. 30 minutes of music or whatever yeah. and uh, that's enough to, to make mm -hmm. something unless yeah. we, we, obviously when we got involved with Ralph Records it sort of changed and yeah. Uh, yeah. like Struve Snare we said that was never really intended to be an album but then it was mm. and Larvae the, wasn't really was it? no not at the time no. you're right a lot of Larvae was not It was before Ralph got involved, mm -hmm. and um, Arabic Yodeling was the f uh, first one that was really conceived as an album, 
And although it was kind of the, I mean, we, we always kind of thought of Struve's Snap as being the first album and Larvae the second. Um, but in a way, Yodeling was the di- what they call the, dif- the difficult second album, mm-hmm. even though it was the third album, because it was the first one that we were conscious that yeah. we, we were making an album which people were going to listen to, yeah, and we yeah, became yeah. much more critical. Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult to do. I mean, that's why it took a bit of time, because mm. we became very critical of everything we did, the quality control, if you like, and we, you know... We just we, we just sort of virtually shut down, mm-hmm. uh, and we did actually take a pause for a while, didn't we? At, at, that, at the time to ooh, s- step back, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, because we did a thing where we recorded things separately. You recorded that's right, sketches I had, I had and a up where I had all the equipment, and, and even the drum kit, which I don't really play. Mm-hmm. Um, and out of that, I mean, there are a couple of tracks each on um, <coughs> yodelling that are kind of individual efforts like Vitamin Song mm. is all Brian and um, Leary Lux is yes, all and, Brian and Night is, is Dave and, well, probably, and Home stuff. After Rain Home After Rain and um, Wilf in Bill yeah so, mm. so there were, but then of course there were the collaborative normal like collaborative yeah. songs as well yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the way we we, we, we worked then is that um we lived obviously very near to each other, and uh, we would meet every uh, is it Tuesday evening and every Saturday afternoon, afternoon of the evening. evening. <laughs> so there were two times a week that uh, that we would meet, it, it, almost like very regularly. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I, I carried the equipment, because the, the 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 major heavy stuff on the tape machines all lived at. Dave's house yeah. and um, because he had room he had a whole room which, which yeah. you could do that yeah. in and um, so I used to cart stuff around on a trolley take it around to <laughs> and the guitars and whatever anyway we, we basically recorded in, in that way and I, I think with regard to the improvisations they were the like a soup that started things mm. that we would sit and we, we wouldn't say oh hey I've come in I've got a song it's nothing like that yeah. it was like uh, Dave might say, oh, I've got this pretty neat loop I've just come up with. Um, and I would say, oh, well, actually, I've got this guitar. Bit. And sometimes we'd just sit and play. I mean, and like be- bearded playing. cats. Yeah. I mean, it just came out of a, oh, a, yeah. a jam together. And just jamming, we just, yeah. Once we thought, oh, that's interesting. Mm. We just played it over a few times so that we didn't forget it. Mm. Yeah. And then and recorded, recorded it. it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And then recorded. So basically, see, the thing was that the reason we could have the bonus discs on Clan Gallery is that the... Uh, I, I, I kept it wasn't actually seen as an archive at all it was that what we did on the Saturday or the Tuesday um, we put onto a cassette for me to take home to listen to get ideas rehearse whatever um, and so that existed and so there were recordings of the songs um, in different stages mm-hmm. of, of being completed uh, and, th- and some things that never ever were used and so that Cassette archive. I think it's about. I've got about twenty cassettes, um, which have, I, I, I digitised the whole lot, and then obviously Dave had the copies, and we decided what we would choose and create mm-hmm. the bonus. Disc. And in, in a way, the bonus discs are new albums, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, particularly the one with um, which is the one with Larvae. Is that Songs from the Surgery? Songs from the Surgery. Yeah, yeah. that one because. Although it was, record, it was all recorded at the same time as Larvae, it's very, very different. And, I mean, it amazed... I, I always, in my mind, pictured that what we released on the original albums was virtually all we had. I'd, I'd forgotten that there was all this other quite different material. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, it was interesting mm. rediscovering that. Yeah. Mm. And how did you come in contact with uh, Ralph Records? Uh, well, I, I, I went on a fly drive holiday to the west coast of America with a bunch of friends from Portsmouth. We, we both sort of, you know, got into the, listening to the residents and stuff. And we visited San Francisco and said, well, while I'm, while I'm here, I've, I want to go and buy some records from Ralph Records. So I happened to phone them up first and say, oh, is it okay if I call in um, to, to buy some records? And they said, yeah, okay. So I went as arranged. And it's beca- apparently, it was told after, it's because I, I had an English accent. 
they thought, oh, this would be all right, because they wouldn't let just anybody into, the, um, mm. uh, into their place. And I went in, bought the records, and uh, said, oh, we, we, would you like a copy of our cassette album we've made? And the person that served me with the record said, oh, yeah, OK, we'll, we'll listen to a few bit, bit now. And went into a, a booth and put it on and came back out a few minutes later and he, I think he listened to like three tracks or something he said, oh, this is excellent. Like, uh, and, uh, right, really? Okay. <laughs> there was no... Because it's the first sort of person really in, 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 in the know or whatever had ever listened to it or, or commented yeah. and said, oh, have you, have you got any more material? And I said, oh, we, we work continuously on stuff. Oh, send some more. Send some more. Well, all right, then. And that was that. But... We, we just carried on as yeah, we normally yeah. do. And they wrote letters saying, you were going to send us something, where is it? <laughs> so we made some promo cassettes to send them progress of what yeah, we were up yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I think it's probably the summer after, I mean, a, a letter just arrived saying, we, we really like your stuff, we, um, our, our business guy be in touch, uh, we'd like to put an album out for mm-hmm. you. And that was a pretty interesting day. I remember phoning yeah, you up yeah. and going, what? <laughs> You're joking. And it was so exciting. Um, and that's how we got involved with Ralph Records. I mean, we hadn't, apart from the time we, with, you know, the early stuff had gone to a couple of labels, we'd never... No, we'd not hawked it around We'd not hawked it around since. and done anything. We'd just gone, gone back to recording and... Uh, yeah. Writing. And how did you get involved into the music of Ralph Records itself? Because they were in, in the States, you yeah. were in, in England. Yes. At that time, it was not so easy to be no. aware of what was going on on that label. Uh, oh, well, we knew because, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We were aware because of um, uh, the mail order catalogue and recommended Recom- records. Recommended yeah. records were importing. Um, well, particularly the resident stuff yeah. and, and Snake Finger, and um, well, and then shortly after that, of course, um, when Ralph started releasing more stuff by other people, I mean, they released the Art Bears, and which was Yellow, and Fred for it, Yellow, yeah, 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 that's how we you know. Of course, there was a lot of letters going back yeah, and forth, yeah, and yeah. packages, and yeah. they would send us. Once we'd actually sort of like, to, yeah, okay, we'd, they were boxes of albums, albums arrived yeah. and uh, t-shirts. When you think about <laughs> the states, when you will do an album together in that period, it was not so easy to communicate. It was signing up, and then it took time back, a long time. That oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah it's no, no, it's right now. Like oh, everything's it. instant now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's really not a good thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So anyway, we, uh, after all that, we yeah, we blah blah blah. The, uh, Jay Clem came over to to see us. Um, came down to, uh, yeah, sure. into, to into Dave's um, Dave's studio, sniff surgery, and we sat on the floor and talked and. This, that, and the other, and, um, and and we signed up to Ralph, and Larvae came out. Well, actually, just as Larvae came out, we went over mm. to stay with them for th- I think three weeks, About three weeks, yeah. and we sort of hung out and um, got to know everybody very well. Mm. And then, when we were there, the residents um, uh, came in and um, sort of said, uh, uh, yeah, "Let's let's all go into the studio together and just see what happens." Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we did, and we did a just a jam session, mm, wasn't it? Basically, yeah. Uh, all squashed into their quite modest studio, um, playing instruments that we largely had no idea how to play, apart from there, here's a guitar and um, there were keyboards, and because we didn't play keyboards, did no, we? no, no, not no, then. we didn't have a keyboard. No, then, we didn't. Did we? No, we didn't have a keyboard, <laughs> and so it's like, oh, okay, and and so we recorded this stuff, and then they had the idea. They said, ah, oh, well, let's try and do an album in four days, and it's okay, and so that evening we listened to the jam and selected bits we thought were the more interesting uh, and then the next day theoretically it was meant to be we, we would sort of split up that Dave would work with a couple of residents there and, and, uh, and I would work with other people and then we would generate the, the songs okay that didn't happen 
I, uh, it was completely unrealistic. But um, that we, when we came back uh, a, 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 a few weeks later, a cassette arrived um, of those selections, and the residents had done just a l- very little bit of post-production work on it. Um, and that was our souvenir of the visit. Mm. Yeah. It was called Four Days. Uh, and that was that. And we just sort of filed it away, <laughs> as they did. Um, anyway, then 1983, when they did the Mole Show tour, they came to London and we went to the show and we saw them afterwards. And uh, they, they floated the idea of um, completing it mm. uh, then. Um, which was convenient yet sort of not in certain ways because <laughs> so, like well how, how are we going to do this um, but uh, it, was, it was arranged that, um, that it would be done in San Francisco which was a bit tricky for you wasn't it? Yeah, yeah mm. I couldn't get time off of work basically yeah. um. and I was fortunate being self-employed that I just said Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going, (laughs) and so spent three weeks in the studio with them. Um, uh, Basically, we took the the the, the original tapes. They transferred the whole of their selection into from eight track, which it was on, to a sixteen track machine, and those became the templates for songs. So you get a song like Monkey and Bunny, Mm -hmm. that. That's got quite a lot of the original improvisation in it. That is, you know, and that was, that all came through. Other things created the vibe for a song, and gradually, as it got mixed and that, that things changed. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, that's how Titan and Limbo happened. It sort of, you know, that's that that recording was that that work was very intense I mean I was given weekends off and every day we worked from nine to six with an hour off for lunch it was a, a like very organized job mm-hmm. and um, more organized than the way we oh, totally different yeah. like, I mean never like, if, if something didn't sort of like happen it's like oh well let's just go to the pub <laughs> <laughs> but there it's like no this is a project this has got to be done but um, you, 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 you gave me a box of loop tapes, tapes yeah. which I still have that box. Do you? I do. Yeah. yeah, I've still got the box with loop tapes, and the, played them through. And the, and the resident said, "Oh, well, actually, I really like this one," mm-hmm. and um, that became mahogany wood. So the backbone loop, that mm. great loop, is Dave's, <laughs> and uh, and I started playing bazooki because I took a bazooki with me. And started playing along, and we tracked up the bazookies, which took a long time because uh, I kept on. It, I had to do the whole song through, multi track it, I think six times to play play the thing right through to give the depth to the sound that yeah. they wanted. And they just left me alone. They just said, "Oh, you do it," you know, because it was just taking too long. And um, anyway, that 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 happened. So this mahogany wood was the. Only one which was completely fresh, mm. you know, not from the yeah, jazz. Yeah. But ultimately, as you as you know, on um, Titan and Limbo was re-released on Clang Gallery, and um, uh, in the second edition, uh, we were given permission to use uh, the same. Mm. But you didn't see each other for about no, years. No, 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 no. no. no well, no. I'd moved to Wales in the in the meantime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we, I think I think we we both sort of it's not that Dave Dave's the best man at my wedding and that it wasn't that I was avoiding him no. or anything like that it was it was just that uh, our, our our lives just diverged yeah. into different yeah. interests yeah. and uh, you know it, it just like as, as life is there are times when things are meant to happen yeah yeah and and so then we got back together and. Uh, it was a slow, but it was no intention of like, oh, hey, let's just launch into mm-hmm. doing albums or anything, nothing like that at no. all. Mm-hmm. It was. No, that evolved very, very gradually. Mm. Yeah. And then you were living again nearly the same area? No, no, no. 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 So it was no. completely different. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Early periods yeah. So yeah. yeah. came together, yeah. Yeah. changing ideas, uh, listening. Yeah. I mean, again, like you were saying about um, communication be it between. Uh, England and America being difficult in the in the early days. Yeah. I mean, it, and the way things have changed now with the internet and 
communication being much easier. That really is what made our working relationship now possible because we can send files backwards yeah. and forwards, yeah. mm. which we you know we couldn't just we couldn't, couldn't, have, couldn't done. have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you know, so you, po you post off a tape with your latest piece of work <laughs> on, and it gets lost in the post. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, over, over, the, over that sort of period of time, I mean, it, kid, could, you know, asking these. Uh, That's what I recognise a little bit in, in Ronaldo Love, mm, all these mm -hmm. surrealistic texts and things mm. like that. Yeah. Well, I remember seeing him. He came to Portsmouth actually, did a concert in um, in Portsmouth, and he. I don't think he did any singing in that. I think it was just poetry and um, reading the stories. And was, I mean, they are very funny, the Scotch sitting room stories. And I remember at one point, some people laughed. And he stopped and said, it's not funny. I, I don't know whether he was being tongue-in-cheek about this or, or, or what, but he said, it's not funny, this is very serious. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just only already seeing this person alive. It was really... Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, they certainly conjure up very strong images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. definitely. And also this short piece, like, uh, I believe some bugs. Oh, well, <laughs> funny you should mention, mention that, that because one. we actually recorded a version of that. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, did it, it did make it onto one of the... We did put it on yeah. CD in the end. Yeah. We, we, we did it as a, just for a, one afternoon, just for a laugh. Mm. We, it, um, it's also, a mashup. It's really. a mashup. It's a mashup yeah. between um, I believe in bugs and there's a Karl Heinz Stockhausen piece called Stimmel, mm. which is just vocal. Mm. And we you there was one particular phrase in that we really liked and we used that as kind of the the backing yeah. for the uh, yeah. for I believe in, in bugs. bugs. And we did it but we thought, well it's not serious. But one on it was like during the Struve Sniff days, mm -hmm. we um, we made one cassette, right? of the Struve Sneff and we put after on side B we put that track at the end I think we left a bit of a gap like when it was one of the first secret tracks if you like <laughs> and there was one one person out there had that song whether so they actually even heard it right? yeah we did put it on I, the tape I didn't know that it was oh, no, I didn't we forgot but it was on the tape on one, for one person and I don't know if they it was possibly never even found <laughs> and we, we did decide to put it on um uh, the um, what we, oh, it was on bread, not on breadcrumbs, is it? I no, it's it on because one of the um, bonus discs it ends up it just says I believe in bugs. That's right. And um, I think it was on the next one we actually put the tray. It might be breadcrumbs. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't remember. remember sorry, we but can't on, remember. On, on one of them mm -hmm. again, there's a, there's a gap, and then there's this secret it's track that's not printed mm -hmm. on the cover. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's the version of I believe in bugs. <laughs> mm. yeah. There was also a period that you were using dice. Oh, oh yeah, I was just going to mention that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Through a six and decided yeah. to mention it. <laughs> yeah, can you explain a bit what? Yeah, well, look, there's this there's this book by uh, an American author called Luke Reinhardt. There's a book called The Dice Man, and the main character in that he. Everything he does in his life is based on the roll of the dice. He'd write down six options and roll the dice, and whichever one came up, that's what he would do. And we use that for some decisions within within the music. Um, I'm thinking particularly a couple of the rhythms that we generated on Elbow were done on the roll of the dice. Hambu Hodo. Hambu Hodo yeah. was, yeah. yeah. That was done on the roll. And the, the instrument dice. selection to do the track elbow is taboo. Mm -hmm. We wrote this sort of matrix thing and we laid out all the instruments we had at our disposal and then we threw the dice mm -hmm. and it decided what instruments yeah. we were allowed to Drum use. Drum machine, mandolin and harmonica. Mm -hmm. Not something we'd mm -hmm. normally yeah, have yeah, yeah. picked. Mm -hmm. But we also with a group of there was a group of us that used to uh, that were uh, into the book. And on a Friday Friday evening, only for quite a short period of time, mm. actually, but we'd go out on a Friday evening, we had dice nights, mm. and everything we did on that evening was decided on the roll of the dice, what we wore, where we'd go, what kind of scenarios we'd uh, yeah. enact mm. when we got to a, a particular pub. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very harmless, yeah. very yeah. surreal. Yeah. 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 Um, and I mean, uh, things like... <clears throat> putting a, a certain word in a sentence when we went up to order the drinks in one pint every sentence we had to put the word kipper in can I have a pint kipper of, uh, of beer please and 
So it, it was kind of Fernando who love uh, meets Monty Python. In a way, I suppose it was. It was, it, um, the, it was um, not necessarily like Ronaldo and the Loaf inspired as such. Mm. It's like it was part of the the vibe of what we were doing. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we all had dice names, which were you never. We were not supposed to make your own dice name up. We were given it, mm. and that's where Ronaldo malpractice comes from. And Joseph Smith. And Ted the Loaf. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because like, we were given the, those those names, and Hooper Struve yeah. was was mine, um, which is well, Hooper Struve was a, a make of lemonade from the um, in the Midlands, I think, uh, allegedly. And the Ronaldo malpractice, nobody had any idea why I was called that. Uh, it was just one of the guys said mm. it. Mm. Um, malpractice might have been because of the doctory thing. Mm. And your your Ted the Loaf. Uh, yeah, there is a bit of a story to that. Um, uh, again, Scottish influence, because it was a crazy Scottish acquaintance of mine who used to give people strange names. Um, the loaf bit comes from, there's, an, it's, there's a Cockney rhyming slang expression in England, um, loaf of bread, head. Um, and I'd just finished the degree, so he considered me to be brainy, so, and I, so I was good at using the loaf. And the Ted bit, I had a quite a thick bushy beard at the time, which he thought made me look like a teddy bear, so he, he, thought he used to call me Ted the Loaf. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how our name came about. Mm -hmm. It was the really first album of Ocker Cassette, mm -hmm. it was more than other name. Yes, yeah, I mean that was kind of... The Struve and Sneff were the names we used to use on the dice, dice names. They were other dice names, and it's like Ronaldo and the Loaf were playing the songs of Struve and Sneff. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah. um, you know, sort of layers of personality, alter mm -hmm. egos, if mm -hmm. you like. Mm. But also before Ronaldo and the Loaf itself. Pimsoul line. Yeah. Pimsoul line, yeah, yeah. A bit, we, we don't really liked it because there were three L's in the middle. Um, yeah, if you wrote, wrote it as one word rather than. Yeah, we, we, if you wrote it as one word, you've got three hours. But we, it was extremely short-lived. Mm. Um, it was for that first album, and, and that's why we, we sort of dumped it and decided that mm. the first album behind closed curtains would be proto Ronaldo and the Loaf. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yes. Why didn't you did live concerts with Ronaldo and the Loaf in the early periods? Was just one, one? Was there a special be, reason for Because it? we couldn't, really. I mean, the technology wasn't available. We didn't have tape recorders that we could take on the road or no, anything. We didn't really think to do it. I mean, yeah. it's a, we almost played live in 1985. Um, we were asked by... It was actually the Double Vision people um, because of the, you know, the video, da, 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 and all that sort of thing, and possibly with the Steve-O input as well. Um, that uh, we were asked to, they, they were doing a presentation at a, a theatre um, in London of, the, of residence videos and they thought well would, would we like to do a short live thing and we said oh okay and we would basically it would have been a backing tape with singing and perhaps an instrument and you seem to remember we were going to do a, a bit of an, a bit of an improvisation well. with guitars or whatever mm -hmm. um, but it would be back, a backing thing with dancers okay and I've forgotten about the dancers you know, no, that's right because it was the there was actually well, a guy at the art college in Portsmouth was um, involved with um, certain other sort of bands Rip Rig and Panic and had uh, links with pop, the pop group and, and that and he he sort of said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and arrange something. Anyway, he said, yeah, we've got the, the dancers. Um, Nena Cherry was going to be a dancer. This is before she became really big, yeah. you know. She was uh, a panic and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so yeah. she said, oh, should do it, and with two friends. Yeah. Well, it only got as far as visiting the venue and meeting with Nena Cherry. I think the tracks we were looking at, Hambu Hoda was one of them, I think Couscous Western, and I can't remember the third one. Mm. We can do three, but anyway, the theatre had just been refurbished or actually just built, and it didn't get its special license for fire. 
it Couldn't failed. Pass the fire safety. Fire safety, and so the co- it was all all cancelled. Mm. And uh, and then we thought, okay, well we did. We, there were sketches and drawings of what we thought for the stage presentation mm. and that. But uh, anyway, that was that was that mm-hmm. until last night. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the other things is about. I mean, yes, we could have done it with backing tapes, and Brian could have sung, but the dilemma for me was always, what what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't want to just sit there. And then again, when we were talking to Walter about um, doing the uh, Claim 25, um, my Walter said, oh, it'd be fine. So just the fact that the two of you are there in public doing some sort of performance would be fine. But again, I felt uncomfortable with just mm. being the guy who pressed play. Mm. I, wanted to do, I wanted to do something. And yeah. um, so I, I spent the last six months learning to play this uh, MIDI wind instrument. And... Uh, I felt, you know, because I was I was actually performing. I felt much more comfortable with that than uh, just, well, just, so, sit, just uh, sitting there. I did too, as well. I, I, you know, as much as I sort of said, well, you know, actually, no, nowadays having a laptop and mm. da 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 that sort of thing is acceptable. But I took the point straight away. It was mm. like, yeah, I mean, you want to express yourself yeah. in some way yeah. on that stage, yeah. and I think it, I think you played great. Last night, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it came over really well, and uh, it was like, um, yeah, it was a sort of, a, I don't know, people are saying, well, how do you feel about it, and how and all that, and it's like, we, we're trying to process it still. Mm. We haven't, I don't know, it's a, it was obviously hugely enjoyable in the sense of having such a, an appreciative audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the audience were great. Yeah, yeah. you saw so how many people are coming. Oh yeah, where yeah. people came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. incredible. Uh, I know. Uh, mm-hmm. New Jersey. Yeah. 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 Scotland. Yeah. Scotland. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Scotland, very important. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and as because Walter told us, uh, you know, when he announced it, uh, he said, "Oh, it's people have bought a, a, um, a, a ticket from from Vancouver." Yeah. Thought, what? Ah, oh, amazing. But we we. We knew that there would be friends in the audience last night, which was great and would give us confidence. Um, we did not in any way anticipate what happened no. we, at all. We, I think, if we're honest about it, we thought that it would probably go down quite well and we'd get you know, some polite applause. Mm-hmm. We didn't expect, we just did not expect to... to be cheered respond. onto yeah. the stage. No, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> And then we did it. We sort of uh, just well, we, we'd obviously rehearsed, you know, a part. So, we, well, but so David and I don't actually sort of meet up that often. We didn't get a chance mm. to, but I think it was about six weeks ago we last did. Mm. But we were sorting out mixes and running orders and things. But we did rehearse at mm. his place mm, yeah. and then. We individually rehearsed at our houses, um, and uh, so last night it was actually the first time we're coming together and doing it ourselves yeah. for, yeah, for, for a while. For yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you worked for about six months for this concert. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. How did you make the selection of the pieces? You reworked them, things like that. Well, there were a few, few that we kind of agreed on, and mm. there were a few things that I just thought, well, that'd be interesting, and sent Brian an idea, and he either said, yeah, I, don't, I think that works, or don't think that works, and um, we took it from there, really. It was really the... Because Walter actually floated the idea almost, almost a year ago. No, before that. Before before that? Before oh, no, no, I'm not talking about the Wales thing. Oh. No, I'm well, talking about this right. claim 25 yeah, oh, right. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, about a year ago, and... Sort of okay, okay, right. And that's you know, we, we will talk about it. Well, we, we chewed it over, and, and, and David had a very valid point. He said, Well, firstly, what we're going to do, what we it's you know, what we it needs to be different, it's not just to clone the songs, no. No. Mm-hmm. and uh, and it's really until 
that the rearrangements, the mm. new arrangements, mm. started to happen. That there was confidence that, yeah, this could work. And so we said yes in December. Mm. Mm -hmm. and but, so, yeah. but prior to that, I mean, Walter had floated the idea of maybe us playing live. Not a, I, I don't think he'd even conceived of playing 25 at that point, but he, he did ask us, would we play in Vienna or somewhere? And we were intrigued by the idea and uh, in, intrigued by what we might or might not do. And at that time, I put together what became the backing for BPN. That was done quite a, quite a long time before uh, Clang 25 was, was, was thought of. And um, I think doing that, it, gave, it, it enabled us to see that it was possible to take some of the old stuff, reinterpret it, and make hopefully interesting versions. <laughs> it was, mm. if you saw the audience. Mm. And how was it for you, the experience, to see that? And that? Oh, it, was, it was, well, I mean, it was overwhelming, really. Yeah, really it just so sort of goes past so quickly, though. It's like, um, when you're concentrating a lot, you can only <clears throat> eat, drink in so much. Mm of what's happening. Well, obviously, yes, there's, there's these people there, I would look up, I had to be, I had to be very conscious about where I was in yeah. front of the microphone. <clears throat> I did get a, some opportunities to look around the audience and it was amazing the way people, well, they were obviously moving to the rhythm mm. and there were people clapping and there were people, there were people singing along on, on some of the songs. I know, it's quite, actually, yeah, because it was in, I remember hearing, I thought, that's probably just some echo of the, uh, or perhaps the guys put a bit of reverb on or something, I don't know. But there was like, they, they were singing Hambu Ho yeah, Ho. Yeah. And I think they were singing before I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was great. We're so appreciative of those people. That will be with us for the rest of our lives that night. Mm. Uh, as, as you don't have the experience of performing and things like mm -hmm. that, it must be unbelievable. Also that you are just, before your show was, you were listening to the concert just yeah. before mm. that. Mm. Most oh, of yeah. are just closing well, them. I was surprised by that because I, I kind of imagined that I'd want to kind of shut myself away somewhere quiet to focus, mm -hmm. and I was standing there. And I thought, well, oh, this is this is this is strange, but it felt okay, and I felt I felt relaxed about the whole thing, and because. When we did that performance 38 years ago, we were both very, very nervous. I mean, that came across in because we didn't have to, we, there was no sound check. We were just literally on on the stage, and uh, we weren't used to monitoring or anything in, yeah. at that time. And uh, I mean, that comes across. It it took you know five, maybe ten minutes before we kind of settled into it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, this was just totally, totally, totally different. different. I mean, the, the the sound in the room was great. The sound engineer was great. Bernard, the the tech guy, you know, did a brilliant job and yeah. sorting it, sorting all the, everything out for yeah. us. Um, and uh, it worked. It mm. just worked. Um, you know, we'll, mm. it it was recorded, um, multi tracked so. so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well we'll listen to it yeah. we'll listen to it and um it you know there's if, if we think it, it, it sort of worked we, we, you know there could even be a live album yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see I, mean, I think i think i think i don't know it's, it's strange i can't i mean i haven't seen any footage of it yet mm. or anything um i know people had their phones up and mm. things like that there were a couple of little um hiccups in the performance, which uh, we we can we can mend that, yeah. But I mean, it's the yeah, it's, uh, yeah. uh, there are a couple of little things that I think yeah, uh, real yeah. real life only has one take. Yes, <laughs> and that, that does exist, and that will exist. But if it's going to be on a CD or something, uh, I, I, as I said, I admitted in the concert I'd left a verse out of Medical Man. Yeah. Now, I, if I'd done that in a, in a rehearsal, every time I forgot a word when I was rehearsing, it would devastate me. You know, I'd think, yeah, "Oh my yeah. God, I'm going to dry on stage. I'm not going to be able to do this." And, all that. and I left it out, and I, I thought, "Well, ho hum." I sort of covered it, but it was disappointing. <laughs> and because the that version of Spratt's Medium and Medical Man is it, it, so so great, I really, that, was, one of my that was my favourite one to play. My favourite to sing. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a lot of energy to sing the thing, but uh, uh, to say, it's got to be out there 
right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's some... Um, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's not going to be difficult to do. Yeah. 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 And where did you learn to sing? Because you have such a good voice. And Oh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't learn to sing. I mean, I just, I mean, I always did the singing. It, well, as Dave says, when we, yeah. we very he, first started. Yeah, I can't carry a tune in a pocket when it comes to <laughs> I mean, I, like, I used to like to sing it. And my wife always said, where does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> but it was in 1970, when we, we first, we've got recordings done in 1970 of us with two guitars, completely naive and sort of singing. There is actually one, one or two songs that Dave sang, but as you said, in, yeah. that yeah. You became evident who yeah. would be the singer. <laughs> but having said that, there, there is actually one Ronaldo and the Loaf song oh, yes. that, I, that I sang. What, what one? What? She Wears Black. Yeah, no, She Wears Black. What, um, what disc? Oh, well, She Wears Black was not actually on an album, but we put it on... Is it, is it, is it, is it on the el, um, uh, yodelling yeah, it's one? On the yodeling grain by grain for accuracy. It's yeah. on the bonus disc, yeah. She Wears Black. She Wears Black. Mm. Okay. Because mm. we, I don't know, we were, we were practising it, and, and yeah, I think you were, I don't know, struggling a little bit to know quite what to do, and I said, well, let me have a go at it. It was and done through a, t- a telephone. Tele- a telephone mouthpiece, piece, you know, an yeah. old-fashioned telephone, where you get you know, that kind mm. of very thin... Mm. Mm. No, no bass, and it's all kind of tinny. Mm. And so, yeah, that's and right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you do. <laughs> but, <laughs> for singing, I, d- I don't know. I mean, it's uh, my voice changes depending on um, on the. But you on also the, used to sing in a folk band in the early days. Oh well, right. when I was a student, I mean, it's just uh, I like folk music, electric folk music, and I like very much the. Well, there's a, is a, is a band called Young Tradition who were uh, uh, these incredible singers. And they did unaccompanied singing, and the tone of the voices in that was very akin to what I could do, and I really enjoyed that. Not that I tried to mimic it as such, but it, it just happens that is what my voice did. And I mean, with Ronaldo and the low stuff, I mean, my voice has to be a chameleon, it does change for the various songs to interpret. Yeah. But, um, well, thank you for the compliment about my voice. I mean, some people said last night about it as well. It's just that it worked last night um, with lots of water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was, for me, that was one of the things about Gertie Herding, how Brian's voice is uh, matured and how it's still very adaptable, but it's, um, it's much richer now than it was maybe on the earlier stuff. Yeah. David Johnson. Hmm. Is, is coming from the Netherlands or from Belgium? It comes from Denmark originally. Um, my great grandfather was in the Danish Merchant Navy. Um, the family eventually settled in North Germany. So my father is German. He was a prisoner of war and met my mother and decided to stay in, uh, he was in a prisoner war camp just outside Portsmouth, met my mother and decided to stay. Okay. Mm. I was thinking maybe he had a connection with Belgium because he likes also Univers Hero. Oh yeah, <laughs> very much, very much. Yeah, yeah. 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 like Romy Magritte. He must be in Belgium. Ah. <laughs> but no, not at all. <laughs> but you're both doing other projects also. I don't know if you're still doing it now, but other musical projects? Uh, I, I, I did stuff in the time we were having a holiday, um, mm-hmm. which is just sat there at the moment, um, so to a certain extent unfinished, with needs just vocals on some things I have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but then my, my work, my work life is so, keeps me so busy that I don't get really a great deal of time and every, all the time I have is dedicated to the Ronaldo and the Loaf work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, know, I, know, I know Dave has some um, more time on his hands. And <laughs> well, I found that when I started again, after such a long um, layoff, it was like the floodgates were open and all this stuff just kind of poured out, really, which was interesting. And there were some things that came out of that which were obviously Ronaldo and the Loaf, and there were some things that came out which, I mean, I always think of the darkening scale stuff as being somewhat darker than uh, Ronaldo and the Low. Um, I don't know about the few. I mean, there's, Walter has agreed to release three darkening scale, you know, a, a, 
a selection of all, of all, all the material. So there's probably going to be one more. Really I have, yeah, and there's two now. Yeah. I have done some other stuff. Whether it, whether it's going to whether Walter will be interested in any more or not, I don't know. And there's another, there's another project that's um, called the Tapeworm Vessel, which I've done with a uh, a guy in France, who just out of the blue, back in the days when I had a MySpace page, he contacted me and said, could he send me some uh, some sounds, and I could do with them whatever I liked and put this piece together, sent it back to him and he really liked it and we just started go I was hoping he was going to be at the concert last night he said he was going to be there and it would have been the first time I'd met him but yeah, unfortunately he didn't show up but we just started this collaboration we just sent um, files backwards and forwards and it was, it was for me it was interesting it was um, quite liberating because we have a totally different way of working to the way I work with Darkening Scale and Ronald and Love, which both of which are quite structured. It's very kind of loose and open and unstructured, and not a lot of discussion goes on about when a piece we'd send things back to falls and then we'd just say, Yeah, that's it, that's that piece is finished. And it was yeah, it was just liberating to work in such a, a very free way. And I think it helped free things up for things that we know do with Ronaldo and the Loaf and some of the darkening scale things that I do. It's, uh, so it's been a good, it's been a very valuable project. And I mean, I know he's keen that we maybe do some more because we've not done anything for hmm, six or seven years, I guess. So but he, he's quite keen to, um, to do some more. And um, Walter's releasing, I don't know how many he's going to release, but he's He's releasing uh, 12 Atmospheres, is coming out in July. Okay. So you have a very good connection with Walter now? Yeah, it's yeah, the oh, Walter's yeah. great. So yeah, liberal, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he's so, he's so, he's such a nice guy. I mean, Walter and Lisa are lovely people, and they're, uh, and they're just, they make us feel so comfortable. They understand us. He, mm. ha they, he has impeccable taste, and, and, and just, makes us happy to sort of you know to work with him yeah, and yeah. Uh, it, oh, it's not actually work I wouldn't say it's work with Walter it's um, it's to just be and to you know collaborate on stuff yeah I mean it's uh, so yeah it's um we we very happy to carry on working with he, he doesn't do any vinyl of course he chooses not to do vinyl we have um planned to uh, to do a, a vinyl version of Gertie Herding um, which, as the, as the track stand at the moment, it fills three sides of vinyl um, comfortably, uh, which is very uneconomical. And um, so we've we've actually got about twenty minutes of um, other other work that we're going to make a fourth side. It's it's not like twenty minutes of Morse. Yeah. So we we. To, to actually uh, to create a fourth side, we've um, taken material that uh, was was worked on during the Gurdy herding, and we've developed it a bit further and done a bit of mash-up work, as well as a couple of pieces which are brand new and unique to it as well. So you get like a, a feel of the, the Gurdy herding. Um, Potentially, it will actually be one piece, only one long piece. We have no titles or anything f uh, for it. But um, now the, the live thing is, um, we've done it. I know that there's a plan to, to have a little bit of a break, uh, but in parallel, we'll work to complete that, complete that um, that track and get get um, in some way onto onto vinyl. Um, so we don't yet know who, where, or when, but it will it will will come out. Mm. You also did something together with the autons. Autons, yeah. yeah, yeah. What is the autons? Well, the autons, uh, the autons don't exist anymore, unfortunately. But um, the autons uh, were a Portsmouth band. I'd known their principal singer songwriter, Dave Jones, uh, and their um, what. Well, manager but also keyboardist uh, Tony Rollinson for a few years 
and I don't know when exactly it was, it was in the early 2000s, they just, that I played them a, uh, a, a, an idea I had to do a cover version of a kink song, um, a, a cover of See My Friends, and um, they, they sort of said, oh, that, that really, really good, you've got to finish this, you've got to finish it. And eventually they prodded me and they said, look, we'll help you. And so the guitar parts, which I heard in my head, but I really couldn't get my head, head around to doing them, uh, they did. And Dave, Dave Jones, who has a great voice, he, he did, um, we shared the vocals and all that sort of thing. And we ended up with this version of See My Friends, which they said, OK, now come and do it on stage with this. Um, so actually, I, I sort of have been on a stage for uh, uh, since, but doesn't it's sort of different. Not so. <laughs> anyway, but um, and I think it's about four or five times I've performed it mm-hmm. with them to a backing CD. Uh, and then we did a, I did another version of it about a couple of years later um, with a tabla player as well and a completely different arrangement. But uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was great just to. Well, it was actually be- really before. Dave and I got back together. It was just something I was doing, yeah. uh, really. It's not been released or anything. Um, I think it'd probably be. In fact, it's a cover version of a, a song by the Kings, and there might be problems there. I don't know. But, uh, and I sang some backing vocals for them on, on, a, on a couple of their albums. And, and yeah, and a very, very cool band. I really like the songs very much. Um, but again, they decided that. The, the time was right and it, it ceased. Yeah. Uh, with Ramon the Love, we didn't spoke about that yet. It's, there was also kind of film music. Film music? Weren't you, was it not music that you created for the film? Oh, um, the architecture film. Oh, yeah. goodness me, you've gone way back yeah, here. You have done your research, Whoa. haven't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> goodness me, yeah, this is what, whoa, 77. Uh, yeah, I was I was um, part time lecturer in architecture at the Portsmouth School of Architecture, and um, they wanted to do uh, a f- they were doing a film about an architect architect called Bofill in Spain, and that and um, wanted some background music, and we worked we did we created this background music with a flautist, um, and. Uh, we, we, we just recorded it and gave it to them. Mm-hmm. That, that was really uh, what happened. Um, what was that? It was Tony, wasn't it? Terry. Terry. Mm-hmm. So I kept thinking of Tony. It was Terry. Terry the Flautist. And um, uh, yeah, we, that was that. And we did create some some music for a film that Portsmouth City Council were putting together. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if it, it never actually got done, the mm-hmm. film. I think it got abandoned. But those. Oh, Goodness me, yeah. we, we've hardly we've forgotten what they sound like. <laughs> <laughs> was that from uh, Kirk Mannequin's Liberty? Oh, that oh, film. That. Oh, that. Oh, Christ, yeah. thanks for that. Yeah. We've just told you about something completely different. Yeah. Uh, I know there were two of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Roten yeah. in, um, in LA. Yes, he's a fan and got in touch just to say, could. Um, do, would you be interested in doing some something? This is what, like, we're just for, just as we started yes, back, wasn't yeah. it? Mm. And um, we created um, two two tracks. Well, principally one, Aria Mirka, was um, the, the first like a song, uh, and then you did you like, remix like the Crank Mannequin. Oh yeah, and then there was a um, we remixed. Um, Oh, That's well, right, it? yeah. Um, Akimi Ira. Akimi Ira. So, yeah, so <laughs> we, we always recycle things. Nothing gets wasted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those, those three pieces. I think he made them available on um, iTunes or somewhere or other. Mm. Um, and that, but we've not actually released them ourselves yeah. uh, this time. Maybe one day, who knows. Okay. <laughs> and what kind of thing was it? Uh, you saw the film, or, or was it? Just we have a DVD. No, yeah, we, we, got, a D- yeah, yeah. we didn't. We didn't. We we knew what the storyboard was, mm, mm, and we mm. knew what he he the kind of thing he wanted. But apart from that, he just left it up to us what what, what we did. What we did, yeah. and uh, so so the yeah, I mean, I wouldn't we wouldn't actually attempt to explain what the film was about. Um, 
so we won't. <laughs> <laughs> like the concert yesterday, there were a lot of videos. Uh -huh. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Images were also very important. Oh aspect yes. Of, of the, yeah, yeah. Mm. The concert. Yeah. Can you tell something more about that? Yeah. Well, we we decided that there should be visuals of some sort. Uh, thinking perhaps at the time that just us two stood on a stage. That's not very interesting. Yeah, not very interesting. So, <laughs> so, uh, and Jez Stevens, as I say, directed the old video. He, he, he offered to um, our, do, direct and put together um, something to go to go with it. And then, it, then when we actually determined which songs we were doing, it said, "Well, okay, let's have a video per song." Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's a quite a lot of work. I mean, the, the, he would be the first to admit that the songs are not promo video standard. They're not. They're, uh, he, he called them eye candy. Okay, so they're just, it's something which goes with the music rather than you look at this thing as a particular film. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of work involved in doing that. And so we um, contacted Popsod uh, and she was very happy to do certain songs. She created um, animations, um, and uh, her husband also uh, does video work, um, created, well, he did 16 going on 17, that one. Um, and, uh, and, and Jez did, um, you know, I think it was about six Poxod ones and eight Jez videos. Um, to, to to go with them, and they, and he he made sure they coordinated with the the backing soundtrack because the backing soundtrack we used is actually ingrained into the file of the film, so we are playing to films. It's similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, can have. Oh, because yeah, too uh, to late or too early. It's yeah, yeah. 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 So so the visuals. Uh, I mean, again, we had a lot. We had, we had, we had a fun. Sort of suggested we 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 sourced some of the um, yes. the visuals, um, and 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 also sort of proposed certain ideas. Mm -hmm. But it was Popsod and Jesse's work that brought them to life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jess lives around the corner from me. He's in Portsmouth. We and so it was like I'd, I'd go round and he'd sort of said something, and you go, "Oh, here's how I'm thinking about this." Oh yeah. Oh, I found this, Jess. What about this? You know, as well. And and they put it in, and I was able to go round to sing the, uh, the where the singing was so mm. that it could be interpreted as well because we haven't actually recorded the singing onto anything at that uh, time mm. uh, like Glenn Gallery they developed also the old material mm -hmm. view, mm -hmm. like uh, behind closed curtains mm -hmm. yeah uh, and uh, the EP that was also the same yeah, tap, tap dancing, tap dancing yeah. and stuff yeah. 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 Um, are there still other hidden things or Yes. Well, there are, but then they're, they're, they're never going to see the light of day. Nothing, yeah. nothing of yeah. value. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think we've um, released everything that we'd yeah. be happy to release. Mm. 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 That's it. Yeah. We just told them, you know, about 20 tapes, and those 20 tapes to make a selection that is yes. Yes. things that yeah. you can really... Yes. Yeah. 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 That you stand yeah. behind. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's our archive. Mm. That's yeah. those yeah. That whole set of discs right through from behind closed curtains to breadcrumbs is our archive and that's there that's filed away yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. and now we mm -hmm. see where the future goes mm -hmm. and do you have ideas for the near future or the long future or um one or two yeah but, i mean it's nothing very concrete yet we're just kicking our ideas one and thing we've been so focused on <laughs> on this project yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. Uh, I can We've had to. Um, but I've just, I was laughing because Dave suggested, I don't know how serious he's about it. He said, how, I, I think it'd be quite fun if we did a country and western album. <laughs> it wasn't terribly serious. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we don't, we, we don't know. We got, there, besides finishing the side four, which we told you about, um, we. We did a competition via our Facebook page, um, long actually embarrassingly a long time ago, where we invited um, uh, fans to submit lyrics, and uh, a winner was chosen. 
and it was a lyrics for a song called Song of the Lungfish. Um, and it's actually weird for us because we never started a song from lyrics, ever. We would actually create music, see what it inspired, and then words would come. Yeah. And though we, we have sketched around on it, we haven't got a resolution to that yet. We're, we're not going to give up on it, no, no, no. but in the fullness of time, that will be done. Um, and we've, we've got, we, 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 yeah, we've got, we don't sort of say anything, but we've got, yeah. we just, because if we do, well, then people expect it, and we, we, you know, then there's pressure, so no, no, it's, uh, and we don't know how long anything's going to take. Yeah. It's a little, bit, a little bit like in the period of rough records that it, maybe there will come something, maybe not, we have the time, and if it's coming, okay, if it's not coming... Well, with Ralph, you see, we did actually, they were great, great, great label, that no, they didn't pressure us, yeah. but it was like, it would be nice if... Yeah, I mean, there, yeah. there was the expectation to produce three albums. Mm, mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the thing now with Clan Gallery is much more open, I mean... Yeah. If I'm, sure, just come, I'm sure okay. Walter would um, well he'd listen to it and uh, oh yeah I mean, I'm sure well, yeah Walter would have very open ears to anything mm. but um, we he doesn't pressure us to say well actually guys I'd really like a new album next year mm. that wouldn't work mm. it wouldn't work for us I mean if if, if the, you know it's the quite significant possibility that, that this live album will happen yeah. because the music is so different to the, mm. and it is like a new album in a cert, certain yeah. way, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You can recognise which piece it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Really, yeah. It's a very 21st century vibe. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. You just forgot to mention one thing, mm -hmm. Andrew Lyles. Ah. Ah, yes. Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that came about because Andrew's uh, Andrew's a Ronaldo Lowe fan in, in that Elbow is Taboo is one of his favourite albums okay and he at the time um, he, he lived in Brighton which is not far from Portsmouth and he got in touch it must have been just by email or some way or other about um, he asked me if I'd be interested in doing some vocals for a project he was doing And he sent four sort of backing things. And I didn't realise he wanted to do all four. I just chose one of them and, and wrote some words and, and whatever. And went round to his studio uh, one day in Brighton to do it, which I did. And then he said, what about the other three? And I said, well, I haven't prepared anything for it. <laughs> But Andrew being Andrew, he just said... Um, oh, here I love book, book, yeah, I'll read that, do this, use that. And so during one afternoon, basically, I did, did vocal improvisation for him, and then his production skills made it work. I think it's called Blackpool. It's on Blackpool, mm. it's on his Black series. Yeah. But he also got in touch with you, he didn't he? He got in touch with yeah. me and asked if I had anything, and I just sent him a couple of backings that he could do whatever he wanted with. And... Um, The one, and there's two, I can't remember what one of them's called, but one of them's called um, uh, The Auto Spirit and Other Phantoms, and I really like what he did with that, where he took the back in and added this other stuff with it. And See, that was Tintinabulations. Is something, it? Something like that, I think, is, is another yeah, track you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But one thing interesting is before we had actually created any new Ronaldo and the Loaf, like together stuff, mm -hmm. he sort of m did... There was a bit of something that Dave sent and a bit of something I did, and he put it together and made a track called Pizza Ring. Oh, that's right. I forgot about and, that. And it's, and it's really sort of... Although Dave and I didn't really have much to do with it apart from creating the noises, mm. he, he created something which was like bringing Ronaldo and Ted the Loaf together yeah. before yeah. we'd had a chance to actually do it ourselves. Yeah. So the virtual... Uh, virtual yeah. Ronaldo and the yeah. Loaf, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And did you know, knew the music of Nursery Tooth already before that? Yes, we did. I, I, I knew of it, yeah. um, certainly. Yeah. Um, I mean, the kind of material that I listen to, I mean, it's varied over the years. I mean, probably back in the 
80s or something, listen to, to more, and then I bit couldn't keep up with everybody. Um, but the, the creativity, certainly Andrew's work, I know, um, the creativity and the productivity yeah, is, is amazing. Yeah, it's very prolific. Uh, and, mm. uh, and very clever. It's very mm. clever work. Yeah. And uh, you've got to admire what, what, what he does. It's great stuff. Can you mention the last three albums that you listened to? Last <laughs> three. Last three. I listen on Spotify most yeah, of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, I'll, sit, I'll sit working and I'll just and it's like it just takes me on a journey with Spotify and I'll just uh, with, as to an album oh, the last three I think the last CD I actually popped in is one from the new Eno box set of um, ambient pieces that he did for installations but I can't remember which one I mean it's just basically one of those mm -hmm. your turn <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> That's number one. I'm thinking of the other one. Hold on. Uh, last CD I... It's probably the last CD I played. last CD I bought is um, an album of medieval Icelandic music called Edda by an early music group, uh, a German early music group called Sequentia, who've done a lot of the... <clears throat> most of what they've done is um, uh, versions of the music of Hildegard of Bingham. But they also did this... Uh, it's even, uh, the the music on Edda is even er earlier. It's, it's quite extraordinary. Um, there was that, and probably the other most recent thing, is I work in a charity shop a couple of days a week, and people are always donating CDs, and if there's anything interesting, um, I always look through the CDs see if there's anything that um, uh, would interest me. And the... That, those are the other two things that I've listened to most recently. I got some some Bruckner CD, so it's one of the Bruckner symphonies I listened to recently. And Frank Zappa, Burnt Weenie Sandwich. <laughs> well, the other, my second one would, would be the latest Hardy Fox CD, Nachsut. Nachsut. On, 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 on Clang. The last which one it, or the first one? Oh no, it's the last of the latest one that's just come out, which um, is frustratingly too short, um, as, as, a, as I see, but the, 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 uh, the, the music on it, and uh, I thought it was very, very, very I, do, well, I, I like what Hardy does anyway. So Hardy's yeah. coming from the residence. Oh yeah, 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 but that, that, was, um, that was one that I would have listened to um, in the last sort of week mm -hmm. or so. Possibly, it might. I don't know. It's not. I don't listen to like residents all the time or anything like that. But it, it, it probably would have been the the reissue of Fingerprints on the Cherry Red yeah. preserved because they brought out all the new label bright oh, yeah. back catalogue yeah. added with. Well, I've been I've been helping them with that. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's explain everything. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah. but just yeah, the last last sort of, you know last year or so being sort yeah. of yeah, can you say something about these second discs that's always inside of it so they, they bring out the original album uh -huh. and then they will add a the, lot of new stuff or the bonus material, bonus material. Yeah. well because the, the, the tape archive um, was uh, made available um, that is being digitised by a guy called Scott Coburn in Seattle and uh, that is discovering all different things. Um, there, there some, some things have notes, some things don't. Uh, and, you know, uh, in talking to uh, Homer Flynn from the Cryptics, he, uh, he doesn't, going back many, many, many years, cannot remember the detail of everything. Um, and so, the, anyway, this, 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 these works which are uh, embryonic of other things, are being discovered and it's been like trying to interpret where they go to, to you know in context yeah. and I'm one of the people that Cherry Red is talking to to help with that sort of thing nice. um, to and also I did was able to supply certain audio as well wow. from from uh, from my collection some, some of it's really very very interesting Yeah, German swing music one. It's, yeah. it's, it's uh, excellent. And um, oh, what was the other one? 
can't remember what it's called now. Mm, I'll think of it in a minute, but um, anyway, there's uh, it's, um, it's terrible, that's my memory of sometimes on names and words. You're not young anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> Certain part, I am sort of young in, in attitude, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, 